for this panel here, I want it to be standing seam metal, um, which, you know, standing seam has, has a lot of relief to it in real life. So it's a little bit tricky to fake in V-Ray, but um, I thought it'd be a good example to show you guys because it's sort of doing the opposite. So everything we've done so far is recessed, right? We have like the gaps between the wood, we have the sort of edges between these panels. It's all a relief that we want to see. The standing seam, we actually want it to feel like the, the seams are protruding out. So to do that, let's go back to Photoshop. And we'll open up our standing seam zinc material. So this is a seamless, a, a seamless like standing seam zinc. Um, it's got like a, just a little bit of patina in there that feels kind of natural. Um, and you can see there's like a little bit of a shadow line that's happening from the seam itself, which is standing out, which in profile is really darker than the actual material. Um, so this is good to go as our map, but making the bump map is sort of the tricky part about this. So if we were to do what we've been doing and just wash it out, you can see we're doing the opposite of what needs to happen, right? If I were to use this as my bump map, it would look like standing seam with gaps between it, but we want the scenes themselves. So to fix this, I'm going to wash it out a fair amount here. Okay, and then go to image adjustments and invert. And now we've reversed that logic. So now the panels are back and the seams are out. Um, and because these seams are, these lines are also a little bit fuzzy and blurry. So what I want to do is sort of reinforce those lines kind of like we did before. And I also want to kind of get rid of some of this background noise so that those panels read as a little bit smoother from a bump map standpoint. So to make them smoother, I'm going to use a different method. I'm going to go blur. I'm going to do a motion blur. And I'm going to set my angle at zero. And so what this is going to do is blur everything left and right only. So if I turn this all the way up, it basically blends entirely through the image and sort of erases all the noise. But it doesn't erase my lines because my lines are horizontal and I'm blending it in the horizontal motion. If I turn this vertical, you'll see it blurs everything vertical and then it's all a big mess. Turn this back to zero. Turn this back to zero. So it's a way to blur without messing up what's happening in the horizontal. And so I'm going to get it so it's more or less like this. Maybe a little bit of noise in there is always good. Um, click OK. The other thing I want to do is exaggerate those white lines again. I'm going to image adjustments. Brightness and contrast. Let's see if I can. Okay, and I'm going to actually do the opposite of what I did last time. I'm going to draw lines, but I'm going to draw them in white this time. Take all those shapes, merge them, I'll rasterize that layer. So now you can see I have that nice sharp white edge, just like the most crowd point, and then it'll kind of fade back down to the, the, the flat panel of the standing scene. Um, I'm just going to blur that with the, the Gaussian blur, just a half pixel, so that's just not so crisp. So you get a little bit of fuzz on there. And so we'll use this as our bump app. So file, save as standing, save it as a JPEG. Bump. Okay, so let's come back to Rhino, create a new material, new generic material called a standing seam. Sink. For the diffuse layer, we'll use the bitmap. 
go to where we just created that. Standing scene all five. Click OK. Back for the reflection. So um, we'll turn this all the way up because it is a metal product, but as you know, zinc is a very unreflective metal. Um, so maybe like 0.65 ish. See how that looks. See how that's feeling. I, I might even go lower, like 0.6. And then go to my maps, pump map. We'll use that bump we just made. Okay. So again, it's pretty subtle here, but it's really starting to feel like it's actually those seams are sticking out as opposed to it feeling like those seams are gaps between the zinc. Um, and for something like this, where I really want to amp up that contrast, I'm going to jump, I'm going to double the intensity. I'm not going to see it much in the preview, but we'll see it in, in the render. All right, so bring that down. Let's now go to this layer, which I have to call standing seam. Connect it to our standing seam V-Ray. OK, OK. So it's come in, it's come in vertical. Um, let's now adjust this to uh, make sense in our uh, scale. So I'm going to click on it, go to box mapping. I use this material all the time, so I know that it's 14 panels, which is one foot standing seam, so it's going to be 14 feet by 14 feet by 14 feet. Um, show mapping. And actually, I kind of want my panels to feel a little bit more elongated, so the height's right, because I know these are about a foot. If I measure that, yeah, so it's about a foot. So I'm going to make this a little bit wider, though, so, this, so I don't see as many um, vertical seams. Let's scale this 1D and make it like 30 feet. That's feeling pretty good. Not going to worry too much about alignment, but yeah, it's a little better. All right, so let's take a look at that and see if it's starting to feel right. I'm going to change this to a two point perspective so it feels a little more how we would like to render. All right, so if I zoom in here, you can start to see that, see that um, sort of bright line that's hitting right on the top of those seams with this shadow filling under that. It's really giving the effect that there's actual seams running all the way across this building and that they're providing, like if you come here to, the, to this edge, you can see the sort of, you know, the extent to which the, the V-Ray can fake your material because you don't see the profile there. But when you zoom out and step in this, it, it, it gives the illusion that there actually is standing seam here. Um, and that there is a sort of, that seam texture is is coming proud off the material. Um, it's working nice up against the concrete, which is having sort of the opposite, where it's recessing into like a panel. We're getting just enough reflectivity. You can see it's sort of like that matte metal feel of the zinc. The, the concrete is catching just a little bit of light in a nice way. The wood's getting maybe a little bit more. It's, you know, has a little bit of finish on it, but all of these materials are starting to feel pretty realistic, and we've literally just created them from scratch right here. So they're, I think, the idea is that that process can be used to create um, any number of materials when you're really only focusing on reflectivity, bump maps, and the original image or JPEG itself.